Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday message. I hope this finds all of you doing real well. Thank you for your prayers. And certainly we've been praying for all of our dear church family there at Lewis Fork. God bless each of you today, and thank you for joining with us. Uh, the uh, message this morning will be somewhat short. Uh, we, uh, of course, will be uh, first, uh, first Sunday in September. We'll be observing the Lord's Supper uh, in the church tomorrow. Sorry that you can't be there with us, those that are listening to this uh, by YouTube, but certainly you can remember uh, what Jesus Christ did for you uh, in the uh, uh, shedding of his blood for the covering of your sins. And we thank you for joining with us today. What do you think of uh, when you hear the word memory? Well, some people in this day may think of a computer or something like that with all of its parts and its memory that helps it to function, of course. Uh, others of us who are getting older uh, think of it as something we're losing. Uh, we say we don't remember things as good as we used to, and I can sure uh, relate to that even though both the answers, a computer memory and a memory in our mind are correct, that's not exactly the type of memory that we want to look at this morning. A memory of memories can be a very, or memories can be a very precious uh, thing to us, no doubt. They keep us connected to people, they keep us connected to places and events that have shaped us and influenced our lives. Uh, we may, for example, have fond memories of our childhood uh, and those we grew up with, our family, our, my, in my case, my brother and cousins and mom and dad and grandma and all of those. We have those fond memories, don't we? We may have fond memories of some special event or events that took place in our lives many, many years ago. We may have great memories of some place we had the opportunity to travel and see. I remember getting to go to Alaska, and I will never forget that. A great, great memory, and just thank the Lord for it, and uh, for getting to do that. And that was a, a trip me and my dad took back in 2005, and it was uh, no doubt a great, great memory. Uh, and then there are those memories of friends and loved ones uh, that have gone on, that have passed away. And our remembrance of them uh, remains very much alive in our hearts and minds. That's how we kind of are still connected, like me and my dad passed away almost 10 years ago and, and others in our families. We have these memories that we made during uh, their lives and we cling to those very, very precious memories, don't we? It's very important as we go along through life to seize moments and make those fond memories. Memories, yes, are precious indeed. But there's another memory I want to bring to your attention today. Jerry Winfield writes of this most precious memory. I like his words. I wanted to share some of them with you this morning. The most important memory to the born-again believer at the Last Supper, Jesus shared a meal with his disciples and then led them in the ancient observant, observance excuse me, of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread or the Feast of the Passover. Jesus, the master teacher, used this opportunity to plant an important memory in his disciples gathered there in the upper room. Jesus shared this meal for their benefit and for ours even today. As Jesus raised the bread and the cup in thanksgiving, he added new significance to, his, to this ancient ritual. And Luke 22 records that Jesus told his disciples to observe the Passover in remembrance of me. This is observing that's they were observing the passover feast as all the jews were there and as they observed it he added a new twist to it didn't he in remembrance 
of me. Not so much anymore the remembrance of the Egyptian bondage and the freedom of it and the blood on the, the, the lamb's blood on the doorpost, but now he's saying, do this in remembrance of me. Let's look at what the scripture says in Luke chapter 22. We're gonna pick up with verse 14 and read a few verses there. It says, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new testament, the new covenant, the new promise. And where is that new promise? In my blood, in his blood, which is what shed for you. Winfield goes on to say this, Jesus took an old symbol and filled it with new meaning. The meaning of Jesus' words and actions is rooted in his command to do what? To remember. As today's disciples, as today's believers, we observe the Lord's Supper in remembrance of Christ. Some congregations refer to this ordinance as the memorial service or the memorial supper. I've heard it called that to highlight the significance of Christ's atoning work on the cross and to call believers to remember his sacrificial death. Others call it communion to highlight the believer's intimacy with Christ. I like that one. I've, I usually call it communion. Whatever we call this observance, one thing is clear. It is a time to remember. It's a time to remember his death. It's a time to remember his suffering. Why? Well, it has historical significance to it. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is the historical background for the establishment of the Lord's Supper. In Exodus chapter 12, it presents the final chapter in God's miraculous rescue of Israel from slavery in Egypt. We all know the story. The plague of judgment of the firstborn. For the angel of death to pass over a household, a family had to put blood from a sacrificial lamb on the door frame of their house and eat the Passover meal as the Lord had prescribed. This lamb and the meal of unleavened bread became the abiding symbol of Israel's deliverance from bondage. Orthodox Jews still do it today. As Jesus' disciples watched Jesus and listened to his words this Passover, they would have understood the historical significance of his actions. What, what they did not fully understand until after the crucifixion and resurrection. However, was the transformation, now get this, was the transformation of what had been a Jewish feast of remembrance into a new symbol for remembering Jesus' atoning sacrifice. So you see, the, the Passover in which the Jews had always celebrated in the reasoning of putting the lamb's blood on the doorpost was a, a preview of what Jesus Christ would do on the cross. The God who acted in history to deliver his people Israel has also acted in history to deliver us. The elements used in the supper are not the real body and blood of Jesus, but are powerful symbols that cause us to remember that Jesus really did suffer and die in a real historical time, <clears throat> excuse me, and place. What Jesus did centuries ago, here's the key, church, listener today. What Jesus did centuries ago impacts my life and your life and my eternity and your eternity as well. It also has a redemptive 
significance. We should remember the supper's redemptive significance. When John the Baptist saw Jesus approaching, he cried out, Look, what did he call him? The Lamb of God. What was prescribed for the Jews to, to kill and to put the blood on the lintel and the doorpost? A lamb. What did he say? The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who takes away judgment, just as the sacrificial lamb at, at, at the Passover when the death angel was coming across to, to kill all the firstborn of the Egyptians would have happened to the Jews as well but their faith in that lamb's blood because God said to do this very thing that was their saving grace wasn't it he says look the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world John clearly established the reason for Jesus coming as the fulfillment of what the Passover lamb had already foreshadowed. That's what we're saying. In Exodus 12, the lamb was sacrificed for the deliverance of one family, the Jews, Jacob's family. At the cross, the lamb of God was sacrificed to deliver, praise God, the whole world from the power and penalty of sin. The Passover lamb served as the substitute for the firstborn of Israel, but Jesus was our substitute at Calvary. Without the death of the Lamb and the spreading of its blood, the children of Israel would have suffered the same judgment of God as the Egyptians did. Without the shedding of the blood of Jesus and his substitutionary death, we would have no hope of salvation. People have many ideas about who Jesus is and why he came to earth. Jesus said himself that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. When we gather around the Lord's table or how we do it here at the church, the elements speak to us of his sacrifice, his substitution and our salvation. We celebrate our redemption in remembrance of him. The Lord's Supper presents the powerful message of the gospel. What a perfect time to give people an opportunity to receive the salvation purchase at the cross. Those who respond will remember that the symbols of the Lord's table spoke to them of their need and Christ's provisions. How about you today if you've stumbled on this video? Historically, these things have taken place. Why are you still not a believer if you aren't? Praise God, Christian who is listening today, we can rejoice in the fact of what the Lord Jesus did for us as we remember him today. And certainly it has a personal significance, <clears throat> the Lord's Supper. What did Jesus say? He said, this is my body given for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus personalizes his statements by using the pronoun you. When he's saying that you, it's including me and you. Jesus told his disciples that he was going to suffer for them. He was going to die for them. True, Jesus would die for everyone, for the sin of the world. But his disciples heard him say, I'm doing this for you. Dear friend listening today, he did that for you. Why? Because he loves you so much. May I ask you this morning, have you made the most important memory of your life? Can you remember back to a time when you understood that you were a sinner in need of a Savior and you repented of your sins and asked Jesus Christ to save you? Have you done that? If you can't remember such a time, may I urge you this morning to take a step toward the cross and make September the 3rd, 2023, the greatest day of remembrance in all of your life, the day your sins were forgiven. Do you want to make a memory that will matter through eternity? Friend, if you've not made such a memory, I would urge you to receive Christ today before it's everlasting too late. 
the Lord's Supper is done to remember our Lord and his suffering, his beating, his being spat upon, and ultimately his crucifixion on the cross where his blood was spilled for my sins and yours. Remember him today. And Christian, rejoice in the fact that you know him personally. He did it all for you. Receive his gift, and you're on your way to heaven, right? Praise the Lord for our faith today. God bless each of you until we speak again.